Hello and welcome to the Workflow Series. My name is Aaron Kornblit. I'm a senior product community educator here at Webflow, and I'm coming to you live from Brooklyn, New York. I'm super, super excited to bring you today's episode about how to create programmatic landing pages in Webflow. So before we jump in into what is a landing page, what does programmatic mean? I am so excited to see so many folks in the chat. Uh, so we've got Glenn, Easy, so many. So make sure to say hi in the chat. Uh, I'm gonna be taking your questions and your comments throughout. It seems like, if I'm not mistaken, we've got a pun competition going in the chat. Uh, so I think Stacy and Matthew kind of kicked us off. Uh, I'm seeing some great puns, so please keep them coming. And, and maybe we'll pick at the end of the stream a winner for best pun. Uh, so welcome, James, jo Josiah, hopefully I'm saying the right, Josiah, uh, Penny. So excited to have you back for this stream about creating programmatic landing pages in Webflow. So let's jump into today's topic and let me just set the stage for what we're gonna talk about. So when you think of your business, there's often a need to generate multiple landing pages at once, right? Those landing pages might have subtle differences. Maybe you wanna change an H1, an image, the logos that you mentioned. Maybe you're Ryan Reynolds and you need to generate multiple pages for many campaigns, right? You wanna be able to generate those easily, edit the content, and have a workflow that enables you to generate hundreds, maybe even thousands of pages all at once. So in the next hour, we're gonna build, starting from scratch, a workflow for generating landing pages. We're actually gonna start from scratch and I'm gonna have some fun today and design live on the stream, which is extremely, uh, uh, not, I wouldn't say stressful, but really excited to bring you this workflow from start to finish. Uh, so Darren, we've got a great pun there. Gonna have a whale of a time with this one. I appreciate that, Darren, nice one. So that, that definitely gives you a point. Thank you. Um, cool, okay. So let's uh, always, as we start, what do you need for today's live stream? You need a Webflow account. You're gonna need an Airtable account, which is free if you wanna do the last section with WhaleSync. And you can go ahead and create an account with WhaleSync if you want to, but Every part of this, we're gonna start from scratch. So don't worry if your workflow isn't as advanced as the one we're gonna to build today. I'm gonna to take you step by step to in order to create as many landing pages and as smooth as a workflow as you want it to be. So what's our agenda for today? First, we're gonna go ahead and create our CMS structure. We're gonna generate the pages, design the pages, identify what changes in our pages, create our collection, really starting from a blank canvas. Then I'm gonna show you how to edit that content in Webflow from the designer and then from the editor so you can understand natively how to edit the information. And then third, we're gonna create a workflow. So often you have to bring your content creation workflow outside of Webflow in order to be able to generate landing pages at scale with approved content. And we're gonna do that with our app marketplace partner, WhaleSync and Airtable as our content management platform. So again, if at any moment you're not sure of what I just talked about, don't worry. We're gonna take it step by step for this whole workflow. So we've got Stacy who's excited. Uh, is this a landing page aviation American gin? We're not gonna be pay creating campaigns for Ryan Reynolds. I am not McGuire. Uh, so McGuire is gonna be taking care of that, but I do wanna show you the workflow end to end. So I'm super excited to jump in here. Let's go ahead and jump into Webflow. And we're gonna start with the wireframe, right? That has been provided to me by none other than Skylar. Uh, so thank you, Skylar, uh, for our landing pages. We're gonna go and bring those into Webflow. And then we're gonna build our CMS collection based on the elements in the page that change. So again, I wanna take you step by step here. We're starting from scratch so you can understand how to create your CMS structure, how to edit content, and then how to supercharge your workflow for your uh, landing pages. So really excited. Let's go ahead and jump in to Webflow here. So I'm in Webflow. Let me arrange my screen. There we go. Okay, and we're gonna put ourselves in the shoes of Meecher. This is the same company we were working on two weeks ago with the Logic Workflow. And our goal is to create competitor landing pages. So Meecher, as you can imagine, has 
many, many competitors in the communication, the enterprise communication platform, and they want to generate landing pages to compete with each one of those. So when someone Googles or searches for um, Meetshare versus Zoomies or Meeties or any other of their competitors, they want to make sure that their landing pages appear. In order for them to appear, well, they need a landing page. So we're going to go ahead and create step-by-step -step the landing page. So thanks to Skylar, we have this amazing wireframe. And just going to preface this, not a designer, going to try to my best to get as close as possible to this design. And our goal is to generate not just one page, but hundreds of pages based on this structure. So you notice that Meetshare sure versus competitor, there are elements in this page that are going to change based on what it is that we want to highlight for each competitor. So this is our structure. So the first step is to go ahead and create our landing page in Webflow, our template from which we can work. So our goal for step one is to create this page in Webflow and then connect it to our collection. So let me go back to Webflow. I'm gonna to go to collections here and I'm gonna create a collection. Now a collection is a database that will hold all of the elements that change in your pages. Every time you create a collection, it's gonna create a template page. And this is gonna be our first step. So I'm simply gonna call this competitors. So this is our competitors CMS collection. That's the only thing I'm doing right now. I'm gonna go ahead and create that collection. I don't have any items. We're just creating the template before we're gonna connect it to the data. So let me go back into pages. When you create a collection, it's gonna create a template. So now we have our page template, and I'm gonna go ahead and style this in order to replicate what we have in the wireframe. Now, as I mentioned, I am not a designer, so I'm gonna lean on our, on our marketplace of libraries in order to generate this page quickly. So I'm gonna go into elements here, layouts, and I've selected untitled UI as my library that I'm gonna go ahead and use to style this page. So first I need an H1, ideally with some text at the top. Let's actually change the body here. I'm just gonna call this new body. And we're gonna change the background here. Da -da -da. Let's go into color. Let's just make this white. There we go. And I wanna find an H1 that has an image on the right, that has an H1, a little bit of text, and then two call to actions. Let's go here, let's go to layouts, hero, header sections, like so. If you find one that you really like, let me know in the chat. I really like this one. It's got everything we need. Let's go ahead and pull that in. And so let's not worry too much about the elements that are going to change. We just want to replicate the structure for now. And then we're gonna go ahead and identify the elements we need in our collection. So I've got my H1. Then we've got a list of logos here. So let me go back into the layouts. And this is perfect for people like me who are, let's say, design challenged. Welcome technique, excited to have you here. Let's go and add Logos, I think there's a logo section, perfect. Like so, I like this one right here. Let's drag that to the bottom. And then let's go to our layout, make sure that it's like so. Again, not too worried about you know the layout of the page, I'm just trying to get the elements in so I can show you how to connect it to the collection. And then we have kind of our uh, differentiators. These are the features we want to highlight for each one of our competitors. So I'm gonna go here, gonna go back to layouts, and let's go into features. I think we have a feature section, there we go. Now there are very many here. Let's see which one I like, which one do I like? I like this one right here, very simple. It's got three uh, options. Let's go ahead and bring that like so. And one last thing, let's make sure that this is in our body. Okay, so now we have the layout of the page. Now today, if I were to create many pages, they would always have the same structure, and that is not what we need. 
we want each page to have the name of the competitor, maybe to highlight which features we win on and not to have this same structure. So this is where identifying what your collection fields are in order to identify what changes for each one of those pages is important. So let me walk you through how I recommend doing this. Let's go into the wireframe and let's look and highlight each element that changes. So these are the things on the page that are gonna change for each one of our pages. Each one of those will map to a field and then we'll simply have to input each competitor's information. Meaties, we win on the fact that we're safer. We win on the fact that we are faster. So we'll simply have to input the elements that change and this is what makes our workflow scale. We don't need to create the pages from scratch every time. We simply need to create the template we need to create the collection, the right fields, and then we input information. So does that make sense? Let me know if you have questions in the chat. There's also a form at the top where I'll be keeping questions for the end. I'm always looking at the, uh, uh, at the chat. So Matthew is clearly in the lead on the puns. Uh, so thank you, Matthew. If you guys, more puns, please drop them in the chat. Okay, so I wanna go ahead and identify the elements on the page that change for each one of my competitors. So I'm gonna use a little highlighter here. So if I look at the H1, meet sure versus is always going to stay the same. So let's keep that there. This right here, this competitor, that's going to change based on the competitor's name. So let's call a sticky here and let me zoom in and we're gonna call this competitor name. So I've just identified one field that needs to change for each one of my pages. Let's make this text a little larger. That's too large. Okay, so that is the first field in my collection that I'm gonna have to change for each, uh, um, uh, for each competitor. There we go. Now, what's next here? The H1, we're gonna keep the same. The text underneath the same, all of this. The logos, we're not going to differentiate on the logos we highlight for each competitor, going to stay the same. But here in the features, we are going to highlight what changes. So let's kind of do the same work here. I'm going to highlight the heading here. This is going to change. This right here is going to change. And so is the icon at the top. So for this feature, we're going to have three fields. We're going to have the heading, the description, and the icon. And then we're going to do the same thing for this other feature. Now we're making the decision that we're going to highlight two features for each competitor. And I can talk at the end of how to make that variable. Maybe sometimes you want to highlight three, four, five, sometimes one. We can talk about that at the end. But we are highlighting two features for each competitor. So I'm going to have a second icon, a second heading, a second description. So we've identified seven elements on the page that need to change for each one of our competitors. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add the text. So we're saying we're gonna have a value prop icon. We're gonna have a value prop heading. And then we're gonna have a value prop description. So let me know if that's large enough, if you can see it on your side, like so. Let me make this a little larger like that. And since we have two, I'm gonna give this a number. So it's value prop one, value prop one, and value prop one description. Um, there we go. And then two, this is for our second value prop. So let's zoom out here and kind of see what we did there. So we've identified on this page seven elements that change in three broad categories. First, we said we need the competitor name in the H1. Then in the feature section, let me zoom in here, we're gonna have two value props. In each value prop, there are gonna be three elements that change, the icon, the heading, and the description. So now we understand the different elements on the page that are gonna go change. Let's bring those into our collection. So each one of these elements is a field in our collection. 
Again, let me know in the chat if this is making sense. I wanna make sure that if you are unfamiliar with CMSs, you're following me. And if you are a CMS expert, I promise you at the end, I will show you something to scale up your expertise. So let's go back into Webflow. Let's go into our collection. Let's go to competitors. Let's go to the little settings here. I wanna start adding the fields. So these are the elements on the page that are gonna change. When you're creating them at the collection level, you're just identifying the elements that are gonna change and then inputting the values. So I have name, so I'm gonna simply click here and we're gonna use the name field to be our competitor name. So I'm just adding some help text here so we can understand that the name field, which is by default created on each collection, is gonna be used for the competitor name. This is also gonna autofill the slug. The slug is the ending right here of your URL. And we're simply gonna put the name of the competitor there. Next, what other elements? We have this one, this one's done. And then for the value prop one, we have three. So let me go ahead and create a new field. The first one I'm gonna create is for the heading. It's gonna be a single line text. And I'm gonna call this value prop one heading. Let's save that field. So now I have that one. Next, we're gonna have a description, this right here. So we're gonna call this a plain text as well. So we have to specify the type of information we're gonna input into this field. So this is gonna be value prop two, description. Oh, value prop one, apologies. Description, let's save that field value prop one. The only element we have remaining is this little icon. This is not gonna be text, it's gonna be an image. So we're gonna call this value prop one icon. So now we've inputted four of the seven fields, those things that change on the page for our collection. Let's do that one more time. This is gonna be, I'm gonna go a little faster here, value prop two heading. Let's save that field. Let's go value prop to description. Now, quick note here, I do have to put multiple line text for the description. That'll make it easier when we edit. Let's save that field. Let's go, remember, there we go, I forgot there, like so. And then finally, we have a final value prop three value prop two icon, the third element in our second value prop. There we go. Let's save that field. Oh, it's actually a multi-image, picked the wrong one. Value prop, like so. Value prop two icon, whew, okay. I promise everything we're doing here is gonna have immense value in about three minutes when we generate 50, hundred landing pages in a few clicks. Let's save that field. Okay, now we've created our CMS collection. What this means is we've identified the things that change, we've brought those as fields. Now every item in this collection, every element in this collection is gonna generate a page. So um, let's go ahead and go to competitors. Let's save these changes. And let's add our first competitor. That way when we bind the information in the page, we're gonna go ahead and have that data. Okay, let's go ahead and go to ChatGPT and let's generate some data. So uh, I stole this from McGuire. I wasn't gonna do ChatGPT, but McGuire did it, so I feel obliged to use ChatGPT. It was also a way to get $20 expensed on ChatGPT. Uh, I couldn't get my $400 worth of coffee expensed, so, well, I got $20 for ChatGPT. So, um, stealing a page from McGuire's book, let's go and do this. Uh, I'm gonna put myself, so imagine you are Meecher, an enterprise communication platform. And our goal here is to generate fake data uh, so we can input into our competitor's uh, structure. So, okay, so at Meecher, we're an enterprise communication platform. We can add this as a little bit of text in our page a little later. So, uh, you know, provide five 
fake competitors for Meacher and two differentiating features of Meacher against each competitor, each of these competitors. Competitors should be fake, should be fake, and the list should be in bullet point form. Does that make sense? Okay. So if you're tired of Lauren Ipsum, ChatGPT is your best friend. Uh, so our first, our first competitor is Communicorp, uh, which probably has the same marketing appeal as Meacher, I would say, BizMeet. Um, so I have done this actually many, many times. Um, and ChatGPT has generated different data every time, which is pretty cool. Uh, Convo Connect. Um, <laughs> I love this. This is a lot of fun. Um, TalkFuse is our fourth competitor. And then our fifth competitor, wait for it, um, Procom. I don't know, Stacey, if these are cool competitor names, uh, but they definitely feel in the same level of, as, as Meacher. <laughs> okay, so let's input Communicorp as our first competitor. So let's go here. I'm gonna add a new competitor, Communicorp. What does ChatGPT say our differentiator? Meacher offers high quality video and audio even in low bandwidth environments. Let's copy that. Let's put that in the description. And then in the heading, we're gonna say higher quality. There we go. And I'll get the icon in a bit. What is next? BizMeet. No, no, sorry, differentiator two. Meacher provides a range of collaboration tools such as task management and file sharing, whereas Communicorp only offers video conferencing. So ChatGPT has expanded what Meacher does to include project management. Why not? Why not? Um, there you go. See, with ChatGPT, you never need to do uh, um, Laura Mipsum. You can just get, you can get Communicorp instead. Um, we're gonna have to think of new jokes. Okay, value prop two. So we're saying more functionality. That's heading number two. So let's go ahead and find some icons for these two, higher quality. I've got this little SVG finder, so maybe quality. Let's make this black. This feels about right. And let's make it white. Line, there we go. Let's download that one. And our second differentiating feature is more functionality. Functionality. Maybe features makes more sense. Let's show features. There we go. Um, sure, why not? Just X's and O's. Not a designer. Here we go. And let's upload those into our value props. So value prop number one is higher quality. And value prop number two is the second icon. Now we've created an item in our collection. Every item maps to a page. Every field is gonna to map to something that changes on the page. Now right now we just have a static page even for Communicorp. Webflow will automatically generate a page for each competitor. So let's actually see that in practice. Let me go ahead and republish my whole website. Just because we've changed the CMS structure, you need a whole website uh, publish. And let me go into that so you see that it's been published. And if I go to the page itself, I see Communicorp. But if I go to that page, nothing has changed, right? It's just your normal kind of static content. So now we need to connect this page to the content. Now I promise for folks who this is maybe a, a, a reminder of what to do, we're gonna get to a moment where it's gonna really supercharge your workflow. So let's connect this page to our CMS collection. So the first thing I need is I need the word Meacher versus, and underneath I want the competitor. So I actually want a heading underneath. Let me go ahead and add a heading, let's add it right here. And I'm gonna bind this 
to get text from the name. Let's, make the, let's take the styling here. I'm not worrying too much like that. And you'll notice that now we have Meecher versus Communicorp. If we had another item with Meeties, Zoomies, it would automatically update because we've connected to that field. So now I'm replicating this yellow right here. It's always gonna change to that item. So yes, uh, ChatGPT has taken Lorem Ipsum's job. Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, hopefully that'll have easier communication between you and your, your clients, if your client is Greamer particularly. Um, okay, let's do the same thing. Let's go ahead and attach these elements to the variables or to the fields. So here, this heading right here, it should be connected to, let me put this up a little bit. I'm saying take this element, the text in this element, and get that text from value prop one. So we see higher quality. Same thing for this one. Let me pull it out so you can see it. I'm selecting the description, get text, get it from description, like so. Next, we're gonna do the same thing right here. We want value prop two heading. And you could see the value in naming things correctly because they're easier to identify in the page. Same thing right here. Value prop two description. Let's pull in the icons. Now currently these icons are SVG. Uh, we're gonna make these images. So let me go ahead and add an image like so. And we're gonna take that image, get that image from our collection. So we're essentially saying take this image and take the element, sorry, in this page of Communicorp. So go to Communicorp, look at the field, which is icon one and put the image here like so. And then let's go ahead and delete. Let's take the styling like that. And let's delete. Let's copy paste, control C. Let's bring it here. And let's change the binding to go from value prop one to value prop two. There you go. And final step here, let's edit the grid to remove the third feature. So just like that, Let's actually, we need to delete this whole thing. Like so, and there we go. We now have our landing page for Communicorp. But not only that, we have this structure to generate 10, 20, 30 pages because now we have our CMS collection. We have items we can add to that CMS collection for new competitors. So we actually don't need to worry about the style of the page anymore. Now this becomes an exercise in creating and approving content. So that was step one. Let's come back here and take a moment for what we've done. Like so. So we've just created our CMS structure. We've actually done two things. We've taken the design from the wireframe and we've implemented into our template page. And by creating our CMS collection, we now have one page for each item in that collection. Now the question of creating net new pages is simply one of inputting new items, approving the content in those items, and then publishing to the web. So we've taken something that could take days or weeks and simply made it into something we need to input information. So now in step two, I'm gonna show you two ways of how to edit and create new pages in Webflow. First, we're gonna use the CMS collection. Right? So we're gonna use the CMS collection in the designer. And then I'll show you how to invite others so that they can become editors in your website and that they too can edit and create new pages. So this is gonna be step two. We're gonna use Webflow native functionality to create and edit competitor pages. So let's jump back into Webflow. I'm gonna take this moment to grab a little drink. There we go. And as a reminder, if you have any questions, there's a form at the top of the chat. Do encourage you to do that or drop them into the chat. I always have my eyes on it. It's right in front of me now. Cool. Okay. So the two ways you can input 
or you can add new competitor pages or edit existing content or through the designer or through the editor. So let's first do in the designer, just like I did before. Let's go to competitors. Let's add a new competitor and let's go back to chat GPT. And who was our second competitor? Second competitor is bizmeet. I'm just going to copy paste. What is our value prop against bizmeet? has stronger security and privacy measures, including the latest encryption technology, while Bizmeet has had several data breaches in the past. Man, ChatGPT just going for the throat of Bizmeet, just not even messing, just saying you've had data, data breaches. Very nice, very nice. Uh, that's a description. So our heading is gonna be stronger security. Um, man, I was not expecting uh, ChatGPT to, to go all out on BizMeet like that. Okay, our second differentiator, Meetshare has a more user-friendly interface with intuitive features that make it easier to use, while BizMeet's interface is clunky and difficult to navigate. I don't know, man, I, I would be a Meetshare user. I'm definitely not a BizMeet. BizMeet got nothing. So, love it, love it. I really hope that there's not a company called BizMeet. Um, so if someone could, could, could check in the chat, I'd, I'd truly appreciate it. Um, because we're about to get a strongly worded cease and desist letter from both Ryan Reynolds and Bizmeet. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. What, so how do we call this? We're saying, you know, user friendly interface. Um, <laughs> okay. Let's find two icons for that. So security should be relatively easy. Security. Um, Mono color. Oh, that looks right. Let's make that white. Like so. I'll just put one. I think by now, uh, like so. Now we're creating this item. Now remember, every item you create creates a new page, and that page will have as elements the information you put into the fields of the collection. So if I go over here, I go to my template page and I select bizmeet, the one we just created, you'll notice that it has those elements. So it's put the competitor name in the H1. It's put the icon in the top left. It's put the right headings. And now we've actually just generated a page. I don't know about you, but me as someone who is not a software developer, the fact that we just created a page that we published on the web feels great. It feels awesome. We just did it. It's done. We don't need to worry about it. We just created a net new page in the matter of minutes. So that was one way you can create net new items, net new pages in Webflow using the Webflow designer. However, as you know, and as everyone on the Webflow team knows, especially when it regards to me, you don't necessarily want to invite people into the designer, right? So one thing about the Webflow team is I never get invited to the designer. I only get invited as an editor, which is best for everybody. Because if you invite someone into the designer, they have access over the styling. And that is a lot of power that maybe some people don't need to have. And with great power comes great responsibility. So maybe you wanna have someone start off simply editing the content. What you can do then is to invite them as an editor instead of inviting them into the site itself and as a full on collaborator. So let me just show you what the editor experience feels like. I'm gonna go into here, go to project settings, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead. Okay, apparently there used to be a bizmeet. Um, <laughs> okay, well, apparently they're shut down. So uh, this is chat GPT. It's not me, it's chat GPT. Can't do anything about that. And let's go into the editor experience. And like so. And let me go into, so now, sorry, I am in the editor experience. What you can see is I have the bottom bar. Let me remove the download bar. And now I can edit static information on the page. If I go over to collection, it brings me into a similar experience than in the designer where I can create new competitors or edit existing competitors. So I can edit any of the information on this page. So let's imagine that the team said, hey, you know what? That, that's a little aggressive to mention the data breaches. So let's go ahead and change that. And let's remove this right here. 
So I simply remove it and now I'm editing information. I can save that. And now you see stage changes. This is saying that there are changes in the CMS that are not necessarily reflected on the life site. I can go ahead and publish. It's telling me that there is one change that we're publishing. I can go ahead and do that. And if we go over to BizMeet, let me find the URL, like so. And if we did everything correctly, we should not be mentioning the uh, data breach on the page. There we go. We do not, in stronger security here, mention the data breach. Um, so now that is how you edit information in the editor. You can also add net new competitors, right? So if I bring that back up, I go back into collections, go to competitors, you can add a new competitor and the experience will be very similar to what we had in the designer. So my recommendation is if you have folks who need designer access, do share, the, share it with them. And if they also need to edit in the CMS, that's okay. But for folks who don't necessarily need to use the designer, the editor is the perfect experience for them because it limits what they can do and allows them to focus on editing information, adding net new pages, and they could publish pages themselves. So this is extremely powerful using Webflow native functionality. So there's a question from Sam, will this be available later? It's actually available now. So you can watch this whole stream back from the start. Uh, every stream is instantly available on YouTube. So um, just wanted to answer that right away. Okay, so let's come back here. And that was how you edit or create net new content. So again, we're creating landing pages but these could be customer stories, they could be product pages, it could really be any format, reviews, whatever structure you need in your website, whenever you need to generate multiple pages at once, where a little bit of information, or a lot of information, changes, you can do that using the Webflow CMS, and you could use the Webflow Designer or the editor to edit or update that information and publish with a click. So let me know in the chat if you have any questions. One more time, we have questions in the form. You can submit questions in the form or submit them in the chat. I've always got my eyes there. So I feel like this is the moment we've all been waiting for, right? So I've shown you how to um, take a, a mock-up, a wireframe, bring it into a template page, bind that information to the items in the collection or to fields in the collection and then so you can generate pages for each item. Now let's imagine that you want to do this at scale. So what I mean at scale is you're not managing 10 pages, you're managing 15, 20, 30, 50, 100 pages. And when you think about it, you want to create a workflow for this. So what I mean by that is often your content approval or generation process doesn't happen in Webflow. It happens elsewhere. So for instance, if you take this live stream, yes, we have a Webflow collection for this live stream, but there's so much that happens before. We need to get the title. We need to approve that title. I need to create a thumbnail. I need to figure out what my script is. You'd be surprised. I do prepare for these streams. And so all of that happens outside of Webflow. And often you want that information to sync to Webflow to say, hey, could we use what we're already using for our content production workflow in order to update our Webflow CMS? Now, this is a very uh, um, um, common use case, and it's especially useful when you want to generate hundreds of pages at once. And it's what we call programmatic SEO. You identify a competitor, you identify how you win against that competitor, you approve those differentiators, and then you say, okay, this is good to go, let's push it to Webflow, but let's also maybe push it to another CMS or to another place. So what I wanna show you here is how to use a app in our marketplace called WhaleSync to sync information into Webflow and out of Webflow. Now, I'm gonna use a very simple workflow. We're just imagining that we're inputting the information in Airtable and that information maps to Webflow. But also the things we change in Webflow map back to Airtable. And I hope 
that from this workflow, you'll get an idea of just how powerful this could be in your content creation workflow. So I'm super, super excited uh, to kind of jump in here. And I've kind of done a little bit of the setup before. I wanna show you how it works, how you should think about it, and some examples, and then um, let you kind of build from there. So without further ado, I don't have any good puns, unfortunately. I feel like everyone came prepared with puns and yeah, I got nothing. So if you have any puns, now, now's the time. So um, let's go back into the browser. And here, I'm gonna go into my workflow section. Now I'm just gonna set this up a little bit. So what I've done is I have a very similar page. So this is the same page we built a moment ago in a different website because I wanted to sync before we started. So go, let's go to... Okay, now I'm good. Let me check. I'm not... I can hear you. Why is the stream down? Okay. It seemed like... Can I get thumbs up in the chat? Is everything good? Okay. Okay. So... Technical issue has been averted. Let me know. We're back. We're back. Can I get thumbs up in the chat? Whew. Apologies for that. Okay, thank you so much for your patience. Okay, seems like we had a little Wi-Fi hookup there. I hope you'll pardon the interruption. So I was talking about whale sync. Thank you. Okay, I appreciate all the help in the chat. Um, and our goal is to create a two-way sync between... <laughs> our content management system, which might be outside of Webflow and Webflow. So just know there's been no security breaches. I'm still here. Everyone's still here. We're all good to go and I appreciate your patience. Thank you for that. So let's imagine that our content production is in Airtable. Now, don't worry if you've never used Airtable before because it looks exactly like a Webflow CMS. I have a table of competitors where I'm holding the information of each competitor. And what we essentially want to use is use this as our content approval workflow, and we wanna go ahead and sync it to Webflow. So let me just go into my dashboard, and I have my competitor pages. I'm gonna go ahead and disable the sync. Just a moment, let's click into it. And this is saying, take the information from my competitor table and sync it to Webflow. If we go over to fields, this is saying, okay, the name uh, um, field in Airtable should be the same as the name field in the competitors. And you've noticed I've created the exact same mapping we've built at the beginning. So let me turn this back on. And now what this means is if I go over to Webflow, I go over to competitors, I have meaties, right? So this is a different chat GPT prompt I had a moment ago. And let me make sure that my, my sync is on. It's not, let me turn on the competitor pages sync. So this is saying any changes we make in Airtable should be reflected in Webflow. And any changes in Webflow should be reflected in Airtable. And you'll notice here, I have meaties, I have this information about meaties, and this is exactly the same information I have here. So let's take this value prop one heading. We are faster. If I go here, it says we are faster. And let's say in the content production workflow, someone says, oh, we actually should change this. We are much faster, much, much faster. I'm gonna go ahead and publish that. So I've just published a change on my Webflow website. Now, again, workflows are complicated. Changes happen everywhere. And one of the challenges is creating that bridge between where your content lives and what you thought your content was. And I speak from experience. So if I go here, you'll notice that that has changed. So we've just updated Airtable from Webflow. What this means for your content production workflow is you don't have to worry where changes are made. You have a single source of truth for what your content is. So that is the editing workflow. And I don't know about you, but for me, as someone who tries to manage a lot of content that tries to bridge the gap between multiple places, 
this type of stuff is magical because I know that wherever changes are made, I know what the change is and I know I have the right view of our content. So that is editing information. The next thing I wanna show you is let's create a new page. I can also do that from Airtable. So let me go ahead and open the form. Let's create a new competitor. Let's go back to ChatGPT, like so. Who's our Convo Connect? So I'm gonna go Convo Connect. I want the slug to be Convo Connect. What is our value prop against Convo? Cross-platform compatibility. Description, cross-platform compatibility. Let's just put the same icons we had a moment ago. There we go. What is our next differentiator? Real time. These are, these are good, I have to say. Shout out to ChatGPT. Okay, let's go back here. And we're saying real time collaboration. Let's upload the one we had a moment ago. Not too worried about the icons. Let's submit. So you can imagine that this is the, another team submitting information for your website. And it happens that you manage a lot of content in Airtable. You can go ahead and now with WhaleSync, this will be automatically synced to Webflow to create a net new item, a net new page in your website. So if we go back here, I just need to refresh here. Now this is already done, I'm just refreshing my own browser. Like so, competitors, we now have Convo Connect as a new item in our collection. Again, this is amazing. We've created an error table, it got automatically synced to Webflow. So now we can speed up our content production workflow. I can create 10, 20, 30 different items in Airtable, get those approved and sync them automatically using WhaleSync. So now we've gone from, I don't have a landing page, a competitor landing page, to how many competitive landing pages do you need? Do you need 10, 20, 30, 50? As many as you want, you can build them very easily using the Webflow CMS uh, and WhaleSync, if you want to. Okay, so let me make sure I've covered everything I wanted to cover. Oh, let's actually go see the page. You know, let's go ahead, if we go to Convo Connect, like so, we see that we have that page, cross-platform compatibility, real-time collaboration. So with WhaleSync, you can create a bridge between wherever you manage your content and Webflow. So we've gone from, I don't have pages, to I have a full workflow that enables me to build as many pages as I want, and we've done that in 48 minutes, because we start two minutes after the hour. So congratulations to, to, to you, to you all. You now have an amazing workflow you can start building. So wrapping up here, and now's a good time. We do have 10 minutes for questions. I wanna answer as many as I can. Let me go into here. Okay, so what did we do today? We created a CMS collection where each item is a competitor. Right, each item is a landing page, a page from our template. We've mapped our fields from our wireframe to the fields that we need. Then I've shown you two different ways of how to edit information natively in Webflow using the designer and then using the editor functionality. And finally, I've shown you how to sync your content creation workflow from other tools into Webflow and then back. So I wanna take your questions here uh, uh, this was super, super fun. Um, okay, so a question from Aga, hopefully I'm saying the right, is how does client provide us collections? Do we add fields first or not? What I would recommend here is work together with your client. Let me remove this. There we go. So I think the way we have done it is imagine you have your wireframe. You've identified the fields, the things that change in your page. I would actually bring that back to the client and say, are we aligned? Is this gonna change? Is it not gonna change? And remember that everything that something, every element that changes requires more work. So let's imagine, for instance, if we go back to here, and let me go back into the designer here. Let me go into the designer. 
imagine you go to your client and they say, oh, well, actually, we want these logos to change. Well, remember that if you have 10 logos, this means a lot of work for each page that you create. So make sure that you are aligned with the client on what they want to change in each page and then create the CMS collection for them, but also remind them and show them the work that's involved in updating and maintaining that collection. So great question, Ago. Hopefully that answered your question. Let me know in the chat. Okay. So question from Pablo Cortez, can we upload files taken from a Webflow form and sync them to Airtable using Webflow logic? Uh, so this is a question from Logic. Uh, so the answer is no, there is no image support today in the form trigger in Webflow logic. Um, so you cannot do that natively within logic. So Pablo, I do recommend checking out the two paths, the last stream and the one before that talking about Webflow logic, but you images are currently not supported in the form trigger of Webflow logic. Okay. Okay, there's a question, I just wanna make sure. Okay, here we go, I'm just gonna move up a little bit, making sure I'm answering all of them. Okay, so the question from Sean is, would you give clients access to the workflow or keep them to yourself? Really depends on you. I would, as much as possible, put power into the hands of the client, but you have to make sure that your workflow is tight and it's clear to them what happens. So for instance, I wanna show you an example of a risk that you're taking when you are providing or giving them access to the workflow. So let me go back into the browser and let's imagine that I've given this Airtable to the client. They might just edit information in here without knowing that this changes information on production in their website. So let's imagine they just say, does this need to change? Now, you know, maybe this user is not familiar with Airtable. Maybe they're not so clear on how this works. I've just gone ahead and said, does this need to change? Now, because this is syncing using whale sync, this means that the production page of this client has the word, does this need to change? So if I go over to whale sync, let me go into whale sync right here. It's made those changes. If I go over to Webflow, and I think I made those changes on Convo Connect. Let's go to Convo Connect. Let's go to that page in production. And we see, does this need to change? So make sure when you're handing off to your client, whether it's this complex of a workflow or a very simple workflow, that they understand the boundaries in which they operate to make sure that they're not making this type of mistake. Because although it is quote unquote their fault, you as the person helping them with their website is responsible for making sure they understand how it works. Now, how do you actually do that in practice? In this case, what I like to do personally is to add emojis. So maybe it's a little uh, exclamation mark, right? That says, hey, if you change things here, right? This is not the best. I like the, maybe the, let's do the like red stop like set, like that, that looks good, that looks much better, here you go. So just letting the user know what's happening when they edit information. Okay, so that is, uh, uh, hopefully Sean, I've answered your question. We've got about four minutes here. Uh, next question, can we add an auto publish as soon as we added content to Airtable? Well, in fact, Maxime, uh, this auto publishes, this works with the API and live publishes everything you put in Airtable. So as you just saw, when I did, does this need to change? It updated it automatically in uh, Webflow. The other way is not true. If you edit information in Webflow, you have to publish that change for it to be reflected in Airtable. Now note that I think this week, the WhaleSync team launched uh, uh, at having the status be a single select in Airtable. So that'll give you more granular control. There's also a way to use views as your syncing source, but that's a little advanced. Let's not get into that. So hopefully, Maxime, I've answered your question. And that, if I'm not mistaken, were all the questions we had through the form. So with that, a huge thank you for all of you of joining me today. I hope you'll join Nelson 
uh, Wednesday next week. Oh, let me actually, here we go. So huge thank you for you all for joining me today. I hope I helped you make your work flow better. Uh, I'll be back here in two weeks. Nelson will be back on Wednesday for a next edition of Build With Me, where he'll be showing you how to select or create random items in the web flow. Sorry, randomizing CMS items in a collection list using low code. So I hope you'll join Nelson next week, same time, same place. And I'll be back with you two weeks from now. So huge thank you for you all for joining. I hope I have been able to make your workflow just a tiny bit better by spending an hour with me today. So thank you again, and I'll see you back here in two weeks. Bye, y'all.